All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our uh, monthly webinars. Uh, we have them every month, this first Thursday of the month at this time. Um, we've got folks signed up for the next couple of months, but there are still slots open before the end of the year. I think uh, perhaps November is our next open slot. So if you think of someone you'd uh, like to see present here, uh, feel free to email me. Um, this is also our first webinar with this uh, uh, panelist attendee uh, functionality. So uh, please bear with us if we have any kinks. If you have any questions, um, uh, raise your hand, little digital hands in the attendee window or uh, type the questions in the chat and I'll uh, facilitate those at the end of the presentation. Uh, so uh, now it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Robert Wang from the Key Laboratory for Microwave Imaging and Technology, who's gonna talk to us today about a, an L-band spaceborne biostatic interferometric mission, the LUAN-1. Uh, and uh, Robert, if you target going about uh, you know, 45, 50 minutes, we'll still have uh, about 10 minutes or so for questions at the end. So thank you for joining us today and uh, go ahead. Okay. Thank you for your uh, introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, in this webinar, I would like to introduce the Lutan mission. Lutan means land exploration in Chinese. As you can see from this artist, artistic view, Lutan is a constellation of two identical satellites, each carrying an uh, airband advanced full polymeric star system. It orbits the Earth in the helix formation, where two satellites are flying around each other. In this configuration, allows us to do the biostatic interferometric imaging. I would like to talk a lot of about on this later including some interesting challenges during development, such as the synchronization between the two satellites. As shown in the deep balloon, we form symbols here, like this. In this in this print, in what follows, I would like, I will first briefly talk about the mission tasks of the Lutan minus one, then tell you more details in the SAR system, such as key parameters and the imaging modes. Next, I would like I would like to focus on a few technical challenges we met when we developed this mission. At the end, I will show you some preliminary results we have got so far for different types of the applications. LUTAN is the first mission of the National Medium and Long-Term Civilian Space in first structure development plan of China. Again, it's a constellation of two satellites in the best mode. One satellite is transmitting the radar signal waveforms, which are bounced back from the Earth's surface and received by two satellites with the orbit separation of 700 meters to 7,000 meters. Key applications include the polarimetric and the INSA, geological hazard monitoring, and the top topographic ma mapping. The two satellites could also form the fly-follow configuration similar to the Sentinel a and B, where both satellites 
I adopt the same orbit plan with the 180 degree orbital fitting difference, allowing for monastatic interferometric measuring. Besides the bistatic interferometric, another unique feature of the low time minus one is the compact polarization where it transmitter with form in circular polarization and receive the waveform into orthogonal coherent linear polarization. This is currently implemented as an experimental mode. The main task of the low time minus one is the global surface developing mapping use the monostatic interferometric and the digital elevation model generation using the bistatic interferometric mode. The mission's main user includes the Ministry of the Natural Resource of China and the Ministry of the Energy Response of the China. Also, Lutan minus one have <clears throat> has that as the only science payload. It is designed for the multiple science and, and applications. We expect it to be used in the geological hazard monitoring, ecosystem, water resource, and uh, cryosphere. We started the mission about the 12 years old, uh, years old, more or less starting from 2011, then started to build the sensors and the satellite at the 2016. The two satellites are launched in the January and February 2022, one month apart from each other. We completed the commission phase in May this year. The operational lifetime is eight years. So we expect the continuous data stream until at least 2030. Now we move the next section about the SAS system parameters and the system details. Now let me show the key parameters of the SAR payload. The SAR payload with about 1.1 ton with a tenor of 3.4 meters wide and 9.8 meters in azimuth and the efficiency of 80%. The tenor have 350 two transmitter and receivers units for each H and V polarization. The peak power is more or less 19,000 watt. The satellite have an average orbit height of the 607 kilometers in the best state mode. The minus wait time is eight days. And in the modern static mode, the minimum revisit time is reduced by half to the four days. It's very short. The expected operation lifetime is eight years until 2030. Here is the requirement for the key performance parameters of SAR system, such as an NESZ of better than minus 28 dB, slant range determination accuracy of 1.5 meters, and the phase synchronization accuracy more or less better than three, uh, one degree. Two operational phase have been planned to serve, serve the main task from June 
from the June to send from the June to December 2022. Lutan is the best static mode where two satellites are in flight around the configuration with a cross track baseline, cross track baseline more or less from the 700 meters to 770 seven kilometers. This mode allows, allows best static interference metric. Most of China have been imaged in this mode to generate the high accuracy DM. Since December, Lutan have switched to the second phase. It means the two satellites are in the flying follow configuration. Both are in the same orbit plane, but with a 180 degrees orbital facing difference similar like the Sentinel-1, A and B. This mode reduces the wait time from the eight days to the four days, allows for the rapid emergency response and the dense time series. Lota have the same nominal imaging modes. Five are the strip map and one is the scan sub mode. Among the stream mode, there is one mode of the best static INSA with the highest spatial resolution of three meters. Three modes for the modern static INSA with a different spatial resolution and source. All are in the single polar resistance and the two modes for the dual and the quad polar resistance. For the first the strip map mode, it working in the double channel in the azimuth. So it can work in the high resolution and wide source mode with the three resolution with a 50, 50 kilometers source. The second strip map mode, the single polarization, it on, use only one channel in the azimuth with a resolution 12 meters. And, uh, Working in works in the very wide source, 100 kilometers. For the strip mode three, it works in the dual polarization, also in the double channel in the azimuth. For the strip map, strip map four. It works in the quad polarization mode, a single channel in the azimuth. So, due to the fact that we use the full polarizations, the, the azimuth resolution is reduced to six meters, and the source also reduced only 30 kilometers. For the last the strip map mode, we can see it also the uh, single channel in the azimuth. The value solution is reduced to more or less 24 meters, and uh, we get a better as, uh, range source of the 160 kilometers. For this system, we also have the uh, three experimental mode are implemented uh, as well, including the compact polarizations. The experimental two is the same as the nominal full polarization mode, but in the high resolution. We can see in this mode, we use the compact uh, polarization. Thus, we have the higher resolution of the three meters and the, with a, a source of the 50 kilometers. For the experimental two and the experimental three, for this mode, we use the two different uh, compact polarizations with the different uh, direction. Compact this two experiment mode, we can get the 
full polarization mode. Now we move to the third part about the technical challenges for our systems. For the first case, I would like to introduce the, the fence synchronization. For the Tersact X and 10 dam synchronization method, as we know, it's the first the best static space boy mission in the whole world. They use the interrupted synchronization case. For this synchronization, the imaging and the synchronization cannot be acquired at the same time. If the radar work in the imaging, it means it cannot synchronization. It works in the synchronization case, it cannot, can, cannot imaging. So, tandem can not work in the high synchronization frequency. So, for this case, the missing data causes the smearing in the animals. The reconstruction step is necessary for the azimuth processing. For our case, the Lutan needs the high accurate phase synchronization to guarantee the high precision collaboration of two satellites in the biostatic modes. So Lutan equipped with the separate phase synchronization system. The hardware diagram is shown on the right. And the use the linear frequency motivation signal with a bandwidth 80 megahertz. And the pass duration 10 minutes reduce the pass alternator transmission. Lutan used the GNSS disciplined ultra stable oscillator as the reference frequency source which combines the excellent short time stability and the high quality ultra stable oscillators and the long time advantage of GNSS signal and the frequency stability of the video clock can be up to the 1E minus 11. In this uh, synchronization system, uh, advanced interrupted phase coronavirus schemes. When we, we insert the synchronization path like this insert in our echo duration, we use the echo duration can acquire the imaging signal and the synchro synchronization signal in one PRT. Using this method, two satellite alternated transmit the pulse synchronized signal during the radar signal gap. Don't interrupt side imaging. Synchronization frequency can equal to the half of the PRF. Thus can get the better accuracy. So for Lutan system, can imaging and synchronization at the same time. We use this method based on our accurate calculation. Our synchronization path only 
10 microsecond, only 10 microsecond. The transmission time, only 34 microsecond. The maximum of the baseline is 10 kilometers. So the free time is enough for our synchronization signal transmission. At the same time, we use the four synchronization helix tenders for our system. The wide beam more than 120 degree for the flight gain. An international radio frequency interference phenomenon is quite severe in airband in the Lutan system due to the, the GNS signal and the, some other interference signal can increasing the can affect our synchronization the the performance the synchronous signal share the same frequency band with many other electronic system such as the global navigation satellite system communication satellites air traffic control radar and the television broadcasting system so the PRF signal PRI signal can come from the both spatial and the terrestrial interference source, which are still energy through one-way propagation. To address the PRF in modern synchronization, an effective interference surprise methods are proposed and applied in Lutan ground segment. Here is the processing processing float chart. The main idea is to estimate the PRI from the synchronization pulse, then suppress, suppress it. Before processing, there are many irregular phase samples in the synchronization phase. After PRC suppression, phase jumps vanish and the synchronization ever reduce. The, the irregular phase jumping like this here. After PRI suppression, the synchronization ever reduce. From this, the synchronization phase contaminates by PRI results in the series defocusing in the biostatic image. After PRI suppression, the image is correctly focused. Compare the left and the right figures, it can be found. Our method can get the good results. From here, we can see the details comparing the left and the right. This is the defocusing details. This is the focusing details. RFI results in imaging defocusing, said global asymmetry, and the loss of the face preservation in the biostatic image, which is ultimately propagated to the to a dedicated DM product as shown in the left, like this. After the RFI suppression, the generated DM demonstrated the, the good continuity in the azimuth direction like this. And the high consist consistency with the reference elevation. For the next one, our system also limited by the range ambiguity. The distance between the satellite and the illuminated ground targets is usually larger than 500 kilometers. Such so transmitted the pulse at the pulse repetition to illuminate the targets 
and the scattered echoes written from the satellite after the more or less, more or less 16 times pulse repetition time delays. Thus, there are several ambiguities region that for the space-borne star. The nominal echo and the echo from the near and the far range ambiguity region will be received at the same time, resulting in range ambiguity. Range ambiguity is the most serious for the cross polarization channel in the full polarization mode. <clears throat> the range, the range ambiguity like this. A tenor pattern optimization is an effective measure to suppress <coughs> the range <coughs> ambiguity. This method has, has several advantages, such as avoiding system complexity growth and the less influence on the other subsystem parameters, such as animals ambiguity. The challenges are first that there are too many directions with <coughs> requires Nulling. Second, it's uh, difficult to determine the widths and the deepens when the nulling attainer pattern. To solve these challenges, we propose the convex opti optimization approach as described in this code here. This measure has several advantages, including the strong beam forming optimization ability and the high competition efficiency and the robustness. Using this method, the imaging range of the low time is increasing by threefold from the eight degree to the 25th degree, like this. So the tender pattern optimization the imaging range is enlarged with the maximum increase incidence angle of the 38 degree. However, Lutan tender have the maximum scan range of the 50 degrees and the maximum incidence angle of more or less 60 degrees. So we ask ourselves, can we further expand the low time imaging range to match this attainer capacity? Like this. We text this possibility in the compact polarization mode. In this most mode, the attainer needs to transmit a horizontal and a vertical pulse at the same time could retain the same PRF at the single polarization mode. In this way, we obtained the compact polarization image in the same imaging range as a single polarization mode, which is 58 degrees instead of 80, 38 degree in the in regular multiple polarization mode. To achieve this, we overcome several Challenges such as high present calibration between two channels. This is the low time results in the Hami city, Xinjiang, West China, using two images. One is in the quarter mode. Another is the compact polarization mode. From the polarization depolarization results, we can see the compact polarization mode is less affected by the range ability than the full pulver, pulver, uh, polarization mode in the in low time. It dem demonstrates the superiority of the compact polarization mode. For the third challenges, innovation wave form. Linear frequency modulation signal is uh, commonly used in the SAS system due to its 
simple generalization and high Doppler tolerance. However, the response function of the linear waveform is a parametric function of peak to the side lobe of the minus 13.2 dB. This PSLR is typically regarded as a excessively high as it uh, affects the weak target in the image. Generally, the weighted uh, window is used to reduce the set lobe, but it uh, reduces the SNR loss, which significantly increases the space-bound system power budget. Compared with LFM waveform, linear frequency modulation waveform can ob obtain a matched filtering output with lower set lobe and without the loss SNR. Thus, it is desired for the space ball imaging system. We propose the linear wideband frequency modulation transfer meeting signal. For this signal, it can get the very low set lobe without loss of the energy. In 2014, we conducted the airborne SAR system experiment with the linear frequency modulation triple waveform we we form for the first time. For generating the digital an RFM waveform pulse approach based on the, the fitting method is derived. For this experiment, we can see the waveform can equivalently increase in the transmitted power by 28%. Means 1.25 dB. From here, we can see. In order to mitigate the conflicts between limited working time and the urgent need for the larger scale global motoring, Lutan were equipped with a signal generator capable of generating an LFM waveform for the first time. The <clears throat> Per orbital cycle of the of the Lutan increased from the seven point five minutes to the <clears throat> to more than nine minutes by transmitting an LFM. In other words, the azimuth source of the Lutan were increased from the 3,400 kilometers to 4,150 kilometers. Like this, this is the advantages. Now, for the first, for the last phase, I would like to show Pili preliminary results. The first is the image results for the best daddy mode. The image is taken in the calibration site in Xinjiang, west of China on July 2020. We evaluate the image quality using a corner reflect here. Results are shown on the lower of the right, which shows the oversampled point target and its range and then azimuth profiles. The performance is summary in the table like here. <clears throat> here is another image in the Hubei center of China, which is clearly shows the various leaks and the viewer. It can be seen the busy traffic uh, with it. Here uh, is uh, also the best static imaging. This is a 
ancient city of Xi'an. Besides the Wei River, we can see clearly see the old city, like here, which is now, which is now over one thousand years old. This is the old city of Xi'an. Here we can also see another bestetic imaging, also like this. Bestetic imaging, also the bestetic image. Here is a DM generated from the bestetic data in the same calibration set in Xinjiang, China. We compare it with the independent at RTM plot the histogram of the elevation difference on the lower of the right. The standard deviation is 2.5 meters. We also compared with the eight reflectors equipped with the GNS. The medium absolute deviation of the height ever is better than one meters. Both are below the missing requirement of the five meters. This is also the inside for the DM in the Sanxi, China. This is inside DM Chongqing. For the Chongqing city, it contains many mountains. Here is the interferometry showing clear deformation of a land slide in Sichuan, west of China. Similar deformation pattern would also observed in the same region using LS2. This is the LS2 results. This is the Lutan results. The results is from my colleague, Dr. Da Qingge. In the February 2023, two earthquakes observed along the is the Anatolian fault near the border between Turkey and Sevilla. This is the second largest earthquake in Turkey in the last 100 years. Lutan data is also immediately acquired and shared for the urgent response through the international disaster chapter. Here is the co seismic deformation of the two Earthquakes showing the clear left uh, lateral deformation caused by rupture of the earthquakes. Here is the decomposition of the calcification results in the full polarization mode. The figure on the left shows the pseudo to color image generated by the polarization decomposition, which is uh, commonly used the facility in the SAR interpretations. The middle figure is uh, with high calibration results. Urban features such as a medium made building are efficiently identified and separated from other natural features such as vegetation soil and the desert. Here is a similar results in the same region using the compact polarization data acquired a month later. We can see at the same, the decomposition results is not the same informative as the full polarization. However, the calcification results is similar. We believe the slight difference is caused mainly by the different observation time. It's difference more or less one month. We evaluate the calibration performance of the comp compact polarization using 
ethanol data set as a true, the overall accuracy in this test is about 82%. This is comparable to the full previous mode, which is a very promising. More research still need to be done for the confirmation and for the evaluation. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Wonderful, thank you, Robert. We've got a couple questions in the chat uh, and so you can keep those coming. And uh, also, if you wanna raise your hand, I can unmute you. So the first one I see in the chat is, uh, how accurate is the global deformation at L-band compared to X-band? Sorry, sorry for your question. Can you repeat it again? Yes, of course. Uh, so the first question is, how accurate is the global deformation at L-band versus at X-band? Mm. Firstly, we use uh, our calibration set. We use our calibration calibration. Calibration set calibrated. It should be similar for both L band and C band. And and so I guess there are some you know data products that are doing deformation at X band. Um, and so, do you think the change in frequency will have any uh, any effect? Like, do you think it'll be more sensitive to larger or smaller deformations or um, maybe differences in resolution? Yes, maybe, maybe some difference in the resolution. Okay, there's another question here which says, uh, what is the coverage area per scene? So do you do you have a metric? You showed us some of those scenes in your data. Uh, do you have a number for? Uh, what? I think uh, uh, for our satellite, the the source for the strip map is from the fifty kilometers to the uh, one hundred sixty kilometers. For the highest resolution, three meters. At this case, the source is only 50, 50 kilometers. But for the lower resolution, for example, 12 meters, the source is 160 kilometers. Like this, we can, can you see the presentation? Yep. Mm, it's okay. Gotcha. So you, you have those uh, various resolutions and, and uh, swaths. So that's great. I think that answers that question. Um, so the next question is, will the Luanwan imagery be available to users outside of China? Mm, for the current time, the data, I think the data will be available from the China, will be. So, so only inside of China or to also to no, other? Global, global. Like we have already acquired the data in Turkey. The earthquake. So, so I think the question is: Will uh, people who are outside of China be able to use? Yes, the yes. I, I think the people outside of China can also use the data. Okay. Um, and then there's a question here, which says: Can the data be processed with uh, sort of off-the-shelf typical INSAR software? Yes, absolutely. Like. Like the SASCIP, SASCIP. Right. Uh, then there's a question, is it going to cover all parts of the globe in terms of coverage? 
No, I think currently it's not the imaging the global, not. Okay. Um, there's a question of whether you're using multi aperture processing. Mm, sorry. So, so multi aperture, are you doing processing with different apertures in your in your SAR focusing? Sorry, I I cannot uh, get a job. So, mm. so it's in the chat here. There's this question from Matan Gutman, and uh, the question is. Um, are you able to use multiple aperture processing in your processing? Yes, yes. For our system, we also have the two aperture in the azimuth. We absolutely use the multiple aperture for the processing. Great. Uh, another question is, are there any applications on quantitative surface parameter retrieval, like soil moisture, and how is its performance at those things? So yeah, the question is whether uh, you will be producing parameters like soil moisture. And if so, yes, how, yes. We, how, we how, how is that performance? Do you have some preliminary results on how good the soil moisture retrievals are? Yes, it could. Okay, so it looks sounds sounds like it's promising, uh, but maybe not quantitative metrics right now. Um, there's another question on what is the maximum transmit bandwidth of the system? Sorry. No worries. Uh, um, 60 megahertz. Okay, great. Um, then there's a question of asking if you're able to share the link uh, where people can download the data from. Mm, I think currently we cannot uh, share the data, but uh, it seems like one or two months later, uh, some people outside can directly download the data. Okay, great. Do you know what website people will go to in order to do that? I think uh, one month or two months later, we will release the, the website device. Okay. I, I guess so. Um, all right, so there's a question which says, is the data used for the detection of coastal erosion using interferometric techniques? So are you using INSAR to detect coastal erosion? Mm. We have not, we have not tried it yet, but it is definitely possible. Okay, um, so we have a follow-up question here from Matan Goodman saying, um, this is going back to the question on the multiple apertures. And so it says, okay, with only two apertures in azimuth, you do not have any capabilities for beam pattern optimization in azimuth, uh, but do you have any ways of suppressing the ambiguities other than minimizing the PRF? Mm. Yes, we have the two channel in the azimuth, but uh, for our resolution only three meters in azimuth for the two channels. At the same time, we have the source only 50 kilometers. It means we parallelize the azimuth ambiguity and the range source. All right, um, so I just realized that there were also questions in the Q&A, so I was, I was doing some from the chat, but I'm going to move now to the Q&A questions, which were there. 
Um, so one of the questions says, RFI from GNSS was mentioned. Have studies been done to evaluate possibilities of interference to GNSS from uh, the Luton 1 itself? So, so your satellite is a source of RFI. Um, we have not evaluated this impact in the real data, but uh, we expect it to negligible because the power of the low time phase synchronization is very, very low, more or less one water, only one. Also, it's a separate time between the synchronization signal and the imaging echo signal. So I don't think it could really to the GNS satellite, which are more or less 20 kilometers away. So here's another question, which says, hi, Robert, nice to hear you again. I read that the possible a long track baseline is up to 300 kilometers. But in synchronization, I read that the maximum separation is 10 kilometers. Can you clarify the values you had in the experimental results and if you have any experience with large baselines? Uh, no, uh, until to now, we only do the best that the case more or less than seven, seven kilometers for the baseline. Gotcha. Until to now, but, but for our synchronization capacity, the both satellite can work in the 10 kilometers case for the baseline. Gotcha. So here's another one uh, that's somewhat related. It says, hi, thank you for the nice presentation. I saw many nice applications of differential INSAR, long temporal baseline, polarimetry, et cetera. What is your experience of the main value added by the bi-static configuration? Uh, is it just the DEMs or is there something else that the bi-static gets you? Mm, uh, frankly, uh, I think uh, for the airband, uh, from our team, from our team, it's the first uh, bi-static system. It's the first one working in the airband. Um, it works very, very good. I think very good for the DM. Um, the accuracy is also very good. Um, especially for some place with many vegetables, many forest, something like this. I think the airband is very good. So it sounds like, yeah, for the DEM performing in those areas. Um, there's a related question asking if you plan to release a global DEM based on this data. Uh, I think uh, now the satellite is already shifted to the second phase. Uh, it works on the best that you only eight months, only eight months. Um, the system did not acquire the global DM. Most of those places in China. Gotcha. So, so there's another, there's a couple anonymous questions here. One is saying, um, are the images available for commercial purposes? And is it possible to ask? No, for, no, no. commercial, no. Okay, gotcha. There's a couple questions about um, wavelength range resolution, azimuth resolution, but I think those are in your slides. Um, I think that's great. Well, uh, this is definitely one of our uh, best attended uh, webinars. So thank you very much uh, for doing it. And thank you everyone for attending. And uh, once again, if you think of somebody who you'd like to see present here, please drop me an email uh, and we'll get them on the schedule. Okay, thank you. Any, thank you. Uh, any information can direct, write an email to me.
Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.